what is Carrera? I love using Carrera. I use it all the time. I'm really, really jazzed about it. It's a software created um, by Daz 3D, and uh, people ask me all the time, what is Carrera? And I find that that's not the easiest question to answer, <laughs> um, especially when you're uh, answering the question, trying to answer the question to somebody who um, is not into uh, graphic arts at all. But um, let's take a look at what Daz has to say about it. And uh, what is Carrera? Well, it's the next dimension in 3D art. It's a 3D authoring suite. Carrera is a complete 3D authoring suite that provides advanced tools to help you get your work done faster and better than your competition. Whether you prefer to work with people and places, skies and clouds, oceans and landscapes, lights and shaders, particles and physics, polygons or splines, Carrera will open up grand new vistas as you bring your imagination to life. Recognized by professional 3D artists as a robust and versatile 3D tool set, Carrera lets you do it all with improved import and export options. Carrera 8 fits well into most any pipeline and can do just about anything. Probably the best kept secret in the complete 3D modeling, animation, and rendering suites. Carrera can be yours for a fraction of what the mainstream applications charge. Now, the last couple of things that they say here, uh, Carrera fits well into most any pipeline, and you can do just about anything. Very true. You can do just about anything. In, uh, in Carrera when it comes to graphic arts, whether you want to make just pictures or animations, if you want to uh, make um, additional footage onto pre-existing film, uh, Carrera can do it. Probably the best kept secret here, um, very true, um, and it's unfortunate. I wish that um, more of the poser community and the Daz Studio community people would um, switch over to Carrera um, just because I I don't know uh, some people are saying that Daz Studio is easier to use I disagree I th although if if you're very used to using Daz Studio um, you know, well, if you're very used to using any kind of a, a software, switching to something new definitely takes a learning curve. And the thing is, is that um, you can do just about anything. That, of course, makes uh, Carrera a little bit more complex to learn uh, because you it it has so much more to offer. Um, but this last one, Carrera can be yours for a fraction of what mainstream applications charge is very true. Um, exception possibly being Daz Studio, which is often free, and oh, currently it's free. Um, even the Pro Edition, which is which is really nice. I mean, Daz Studio is fantastic, but y you can't model in it um, to any degree. Um, uh, Carrera is much more robust. You can create 3D characters and avatar um, because you can create 3D models from scratch. Those two are, are one in the same. And uh, the modeling tools are quite robust. You, um, I hear some people complain because it doesn't include quite all of the features uh, that people are used to in things like um, Maya or 3ds Max. Well, um, you know, if you can afford Maya and 3ds Max, um, actually, I do know that there are some people that own 3ds Max, some people that own Maya, and still they like to use Carrera. Uh, be, um, make your own high-quality CG movies, true. Combine live footage with CG elements, true. Design 3D text and logos. Design detailed landscapes and environments, it's all very, very true. Um, uh, here is just a 
a blank scene in Carrera and at its very basic state it's a 3D modeler but it's also a scene assembler you can use content from uh, the the great Daz, Daz uh, 3D collection of products um, you can build your own assets or you can you can use content it comes with um, right here is the browser we can close that we can bring it back up and this is your browser you can also even uh, drag it way up and have a good look and it comes with all of this stuff that I'm about to show you here are just some sky presets we have landscape presets landscapes 2 um, space um, this solar system one is actually even a, a full-blown animation that turns out pretty cool interior um, presets which is very valuable because not only does it have some pretty cool models in there I mean it's just some basic modeling but um, modeling to show some uh, practical interior um, difficulties that you may may be faced with in doing CG and if you look at these presets they have different names to them even though they may have the same architecture in there and what they're doing is um, giving you some presets on how you can see uh, different ways of lighting and the effect that it has on the scene itself how how much uh, longer it may take to render or how much quicker it may take to render um, and these scenes are really nice to actually just take apart and uh, take a look at how they've done it. This is this category lighting scene has uh, uh, presets that um, are very good for just studying lighting, and uh, this this one didn't come with it. This one did. Packaging. We've got logos. We've got global illumination. Another exercise in lighting. Exercise in animation. Uh, quick tour, special effects, miscellaneous, and then the last three here I added myself as with this lights. And then where some of these open up uh, are where I have added um, my own things. Um, and now that's just the scenes tab. If we go to objects tab, it comes complete with some some deserts some plains some mountains high mountains all of this stuff is very easily made within Carrera by the way that but these presets um, show you some great examples on um, you know how to actually have a completed piece and um, along with the shaders that are involved with giving getting the textures just like that and these scenes when you go into these they already have their their shaders in place and uh, we'll get more into that um, we have some ocean examples miscellaneous examples basic plants um, uh, the leaves for those plants um, basic clouds particles objects and um, those are basic objects we have advanced objects we have formula make created objects using uh, nothing more than math to create it um, that was a category these are some categories that I added and there's nothing in there but aircraft some nice little aircraft airplane models um, I see there's an astronaut and these are actually nice on uh, introducing how to model some things but you can also use these to uh, practice your hand at creating your own textures and um, or, or you can just use them in your scenes there's you know, all this stuff comes with it it's um, 
really neat. I, I'm not going to go through everything in all of detail, but I did do want to click through each of these categories so you can see all of this neat stuff that comes with Carrara. I mean, you need to fill a table with food. You don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff. You can you can put down a table and and fill it with food. And if, as a matter of fact, if you need the table, that's in, there's an example of that stuff in here too. Bobbing for apples, camcorder. Uh, here's some home, home things. We've got industry, kitchen, land and sea, medical, mesh models, um, which is a very generic term for 3D modeling. And uh, for a 3D model is is referred to as a mesh, and uh, so. But uh, a clear distinction here is that these are actually mesh models, which are uh, vertex objects, whereas some of these are um, like the uh, the aircraft. I believe a lot of these are actually spline models. Um, where were we here? Miscellaneous. We've got music. We've got nature. And this little thing is because my I, my products add these little categories um, into that. I like to use the the um, catalog that was already included in here. New models that uh, were introduced actually quite some time ago, but it's just, it just hasn't changed the the library title. Um, no real need for that. You even have a crash test dummy in there. Uh, office, personal, recreation, science and technology, ships, and ship related items, sports, tools, transport, travel, weapons writer and then these uh, these um, you can add your own folders to these catalog categories by coming over here and and adding a folder and that'll add a folder to any any tab that you have here um, you can also add your own folders into the um, my objects and I have instructions on how to get there if you just go to uh, daz3d.com and we go to community forums and Carrara discussion. Uh, I have a, a sticky thread here called Carrara Information Manual, and inside of there, um, we explore Carrara pretty heavy duty. Um, and I'm always willing to add new things to this um, if the demand arises, or actually if anybody just. Um, uh, asks. I'm, I'm very uh, happy to uh, just help anybody in understanding Carrera better or, or um, improving on their workflow within Carrera. Now let's continue our tour. <clears throat> um, Carrera comes complete with a lot of shaders. If if you've ever worked with um, Poser or Daz Studio or 3DS Max, Maya, Lightwave, anything like that, you know that making things look the way they need to look is a big part of the challenge. Not just the modeling, but actually um, getting the, the textures down. And Carrera has a very robust room. Uh, right here, the texture room. And if we Oh, bring in a shader right here. We can see how intense we can get with creating um, very heavy duty looks to things. Uh, that's what the shaders are. They're the material. What what type of material? the object that you've created is made made out of. So we've got basic shaders, we've got glass, diff many different types of glass, metal, different types of metal, miscellaneous uh, category, nature category, organic, which is hair and skin. Uh, the skin um, 
comes with additional products, but uh, I believe in there you'll get um, some stuff with Carrara. Uh, these these Victoria 5 and Michael 5. I got the Pro Edition, and um, so that includes three of them, and I believe the non-Pro only includes two for each of uh, Michael 5 and Victoria 5. Um, we've got plastic, rocks and stone, subsurface scattering, terrain, trees, water, and these are some excellent water shaders. Would Actually, all of these shaders are really, really neat. Uh, basic colors, basic displacements, basic grayscales, and then some more folders that I added myself. And uh, so these are all presets, and you can just grab them and drag them onto any object in your scene, and it, it's really easy to use. Clips is where you can save your animation clips. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a separate video all on animating. Um, the first one coming up is uh, all about animating using uh, Go Figures Animate and the um, the plugin <coughs> for using those within Carrara. Um, miscellaneous uh, category includes um, some skies that you can just drag into the scene. You um, where you come into atmosphere, you can just drag a sky onto that and that right there will make a difference to your scene. I'm not aimed right. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing. I've got the enable ground on. There we go. But um, we can undo that, get rid of that. Um, but these things you can just drag them right in. We're making Carrera very easy. My effects. Now that's another one of these folders that's within your My Documents folder. There's a folder where you can add your own folders, like I've done with objects here. Um, these are all categories I've added myself by putting folders within a folder in in the My Documents folder, and then from inside of any of these folders, you can. Uh, expand them however you want. Create your own hierarchies. A buddy of mine from the Carrera uh, community, evil producer, doesn't in, doesn't like having a lot of drilling down. He calls it. Um, he would rather have a nice long list right in here. But uh, I like to keep my my things all sorted out in these different categories. Um, it just it helps me in my process. And, and what's nice about Carrera is that it's set up so that um, you can customize it for your own work styles. And see, you, if you want to play with the volumetric lighting system, there's, um, there's the uh, light cones. We've got lens flares. You can blur objects. And blurring, there, there are some um, like the lens flare and blurring, there are some post-render um, uh, functions built right into Carrera. Um, these are for custom constraints that you've add yourself. Here are some basic constraints that you can add to rigging. Uh, modifiers, uh, there again, this one's my modifiers. This is so that if you have a mo a modifier in your scene that you've you've worked on and you want to save it all you have to do is grab it and drag it into here it's it's saying that I can't do that because this isn't a modifier but um, all you do is you grab your modifier and just drag it right into into this window here and you'll get a um, you get a little thumbnail like that uh, like this um, so basic modifiers, these are modifiers that they've saved into the browser like I just explained. Atomize um, modifiers, uh, some behaviors, some more modifiers, the bend modifier, the bend and twist modifier, the bulge modifier, dissolve, 
explode others. Um, just some really nice um, preset uh, examples of how things work within Carrera. And it's really exciting to see this kind of thing. I've never ever seen a uh, a software this that comes with this complete of examples. Um, here's where you can add your own um, your your own artwork if you if you choose. Uh, I went and got out of the renders folder and back into and and now it's it's got to load it all up again. Okay, here's content is. This is how you um, connect your Daz Studio and Poser content to Carrera, and uh, you know. So, so you see, this is a this is a runtime. So it's set up to show you Carrera. I mean, a uh, uh, Poser f uh, content, and this is the Daz 3D library, and you can add more. But see, it's set up to show you the uh, the Daz Studio content, and again, you add that kind of stuff right here. Now that we're in the Content tab, it it allows you to add runtime, and you can auto detect any runtimes that you have on your system. Um, I'm not even going to go into Smart Content. I don't know much about it. I'm um, not that into using databases myself I I uh, know where I put all of my stuff where it's installed using my my content system here making all these different runtimes so uh, I prefer to just know where my stuff is rather than using it but um, basically I guess how it works is if you have um, say Genesis if you have something loaded in here that that uh, has metadata uh, from Daz basically it works with Daz 3D products and if I loaded Genesis in there and selected it and then went into the smart content tab it would show me everything that I have in my library that works with that and um, I uh, well, enough on that. Uh, more about what Carrera is. At the at, a, at the bare basics of your 3D environment, it's already allowing you to set up some things about your scene um, that will. It doesn't matter what you put in here. It's going to. You, you can automate how it's lit. Uh, you can add a realistic sky. You can add the ground or, or not. And then if we make this light into a sunlight, now we can come back into this scene and edit our realistic sky. And we can change the position of that light simply by dragging this little icon around and then test the sky out and see how it automatically updated that information so now I can see oh I didn't want it there I wanted to actually be able to see the the Sun in my scene so I'm gonna want this thing pointing more at the camera so let's just take a look here and now it's way off but if I really want this thing to, if I want the sun to show up in the camera, I can select this light. And rotate it around and I'll get a little icon showing. And now I can either render it here and see the sun. Or I can go back into my... This is really handy because... And now I know that I'm, I'm facing pretty much west. My camera is facing west. And uh, now inside this realistic sky, this includes atmosphere. That's why when we have the sun way off over here, you see it change color in the sky. And it'll do that all automatically for you. You make it noon and it's going to be a nice bright sky. And 
the sunlight will brightly light your scene and then now if we want it this way we'll be able to see the sun setting within our scene I'm just off just a little bit bring it over here now we can see the sun in our scene or and what that'll do is it'll backlight anything that's in our scene but if we want to brightly light anything that it's in our scene we just go to the opposite side and voila but um, it's always nice to go off to the side a little bit but um, anyway this is all this is a realistic sky you can go with a cloudy fog you can uh, use a distance fog or just a the the old plain sky and there again you still have these same tools but you can see it's a it's a, it's a it's a different setup and there's all these things that you can enable here's your haze fog uh, cloud layer one cloud layer two and um, really neat stuff and then th these are your adjustments if we enable that it gives us things that we can do ab about it um, get rid of the clouds you have nothing get, get add them back in and you can add different layers of them so I've never tried this uh, the older type of sky I really like the uh, the realistic sky it's here uh, but we'll go back to none um, background here you can enter in let's say a color and right here is your color chip click on that and you can make any color you want right now we have a red background <laughs> I mean for for a lot of uh, realistic 3d scenes that's not going to work at all but um, Carrera is not made for any one type of thing it is uh, made for all types of things here we just added a bi gradient and uh, the bi gradient is one gradient going from the horizon up and another uh, gradient going from the horizon down and so we get this sort of effect okay and if we looked straight up we would get more this color I believe we can always test that See, now that was opposite. This is directly overhead. We can make that yellow. And down here, we want to make that blue. Okay, and, and it, it can blend together. You can change the horizon. And now we're getting more of a blending between these because of where we place the horizon. Whereas if we do it the other way around, I'm only going to get ground right now. And that's the problem that I was having before when I was trying to show off that sky and the, the ground was looking like this. But well, we can go back to none here. We can, you, or you can add a formula in here. I'm not sure what this formula does. But if you, if you know... Um, formulas or like to search them on the internet you can um, uh, add an HDRI which is a um, th that will also give you lighting information through the image itself you can also use a map um, here's one here's some that come with one of my some of my products here if we just put this one in it takes it'll take a little while because this one's a really large image and uh, what it what it will do is provide uh, reflections for anything I might put in the scene that's reflective without anything in here in 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 your scene reflections will just show up as black because there's nothing to reflect but here um, I'll actually get the image that I rendered in here and so since this is actually a 360 degree spherical image 
Uh, now I, I have a full scene no matter where I look. And if I look straight at the ground, it's not going to look all that great um, just because that's the end of the sphere. And uh, But it's, it's really not that bad. Um, but the, the neat part about it is now if I switch completely around, now I'm this will reflect through the eyes of my character, okay? And it gives gives something to reflect. And so if you don't have any maps or anything like that, you can also get that sort of effect by using a bi-gradient. And then you're at least giving something. You know, you get, you're giving the... Uh, the reflections something to reflect okay all of this stuff is set up now and we don't even have really have anything in our scene right now we have a little target helper object um, so let's look at some scenes that do have stuff in them um, I, I'm not sure if I'm if I'm exp answering your question yet so I'll, I'll, I'll keep going let's just close this one out we're not gonna save anything and now here is a scene that I have made and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. We come here into the render room and um, I'll make this fill the screen a little bit more. And that's an animation that I created. Okay. Okay, and that's my character that I play. And now if we look at it in the actual scene, this is the filming camera. We can see the production frame. And we have these useful guides right here where there's blank spots with no lines. Those intersections right in here, those are the... Um, spots where you want to put your focal objects on and so if we scrub through this it's it's not going to update that fast because there's a lot of information I'll show you why in a second but uh, see I have his hair moving and uh, see now he's, I have him so that it ends up in the center of the of the screen the TV so to speak but now if we go to the, the uh, director's camera we'll see that this is no tiny bit of information that this that this wonderful software is just cranking through for me and see this is one thing that I didn't really care for in Poser is that it was really hard for me to navigate giant scenes like this and this is it's just as easy as grabbing a hold of this tool and dragging my mouse around I can zoom way out zoom way in and this is at medium screen resolution if we come into the interface we can change it from medium to large or medium to small and um, that changes how far it click it goes with your with your mouse wheel clicks um, in a large scene one little click on this and the whole thing would just disappear like that kind of you know uh, it so it, you know it, it scales towards what size of scenes you're working with whereas a lot of these landscapes and stuff these are large scenes and um, and it works better that way it's it's more convenient and yet um, Carrera allows you to be the the ruler of it you can change it right here uh, and if like right now I'm in a medium scene I can drag one of these landscape scenes into there and it's still the same scale it's still the same size of scene but I'm actually using it in a medium scale scene but uh, this is Predatron 3D's MU link and we're looking at it without texture mode on so that I have a little bit finer degree of manipulation while I'm working because he's got a lot of textures my my little character here and I have uh, 
something that you cannot see in here. I'll zero on that. Now if you see that that yellow outline of a cube, that is a volumetric cloud. Okay, and the volumetric clouds in Carrera are an effect of their own. Let's watch this once as I scrub through. Let's see, I have it rising and rotating. And so that's that's what's creating this this somewhat steamy effect. So you see that? That's the volumetric cloud right there. And um, and now I do these renderings at very simple settings, very very simple settings, and it turns out really good, in my opinion. I mean, I'll I'll show you in a second how um, it can be not that great. Well, that's my next my next example here is this is my the character that my wife plays, which is basically like her when she's younger. And that, that other one was me when I was younger. And here she's walking along. And here I, w I wanted to show you this scene because it shows how much content we can put in a scene. And it still works pretty well. I'll, I'll open up the scene in a second here. And see, if I just play back, I'll put it on loop you can see this graininess going on and that is because of my really super low rendering you know this is a the test render setting and so I'm getting that graininess in there but um, yeah you can see I've got the blinking going on I didn't do anything with her mouth so much oh it is moving subtly that's right and uh, uh, the people back there are moving around. These people over here that you can't see are actually moving around a little. Just uh, not very much and they don't show up in the scene very much but just that tiny little bit just offers a little bit more realism to a scene. Okay. Now if we come over here and close out on this one. Now we're in the scene that we were just looking at and now if I switch to the scene cam and pan around a little bit so you can see the our little rigged figures highlighted in blue wires there and now if I zoom back out a bit we we'll see that I'm using Favreau's um, medieval docks product which is just fantastic and since I'm in Carrera um, not sure about this one. Usually, um, I'll I'll actually use the uh, the Carrara Ocean primitive rather than the water that comes with this one. But perhaps I'm I'm uh, I'm actually using the one that came with this, and then a, a different style of background. The the background that I have in here. Uh, if I look at the panorama cam, okay, let's go to this, select this panorama, and click zero. Why am I not seeing it? I haven't panned out far enough yet. Let's go to this and type zero, and see now what what we have here is a big gigantic globe um, and that's the that's the sky box so to speak or sky dome and uh, I have four different ones with only one of them set to visi visible and that's the foggy one but uh, so in a pinch if I want to grab this scene and film it in the sunset I just grab the sunset one and make it visible and so that's a separate product but um, but if we go back to the scene cam we can see that there's an awful lot of geometry and architecture going on in here I do have the the textures enabled and Carrera is allowing me to to work away and that is very nice if we 
scrub through we can see that um, little Rosie is walking and you don't see much of it because we're zoomed out too far I didn't populate all this stuff out here because none of it was in the scene this is another scene with Rosie in there and this is flip modes planetarium and uh, here is the animation I have for it but the the animation that I have for this I, I have uh, added some post work in projects dog waffles uh, pro version called howler which uh, has animation functions in it and let's just put this on a loop and you'll see the lightning coming that's all the, this this flashing going on in here and the lightning that's all um, project dog waffle holler that I've done but the the render itself and the uh, the animation that's that's all Carrera and the scene itself is flip modes planetarium this is the um, this background that you're seeing in here is the uh, that's that comes with this product that comes with the planetarium product and that's what we're seeing here and uh, the thing about um, Carrara with poser products like this is that the uh, the surfaces are not quite right um, because Carrara has its own render engine so what we need to do is go into each of these shaders and adjust them slightly some of sometimes you don't have to but I'm I'm really quite fussy about some of this stuff so and see all the there's a lot of shaders in here and to make sure that you're not using redundant shaders Carrera has this great feature here it's edit remove unused masters remove unused clips consolidate duplicate shaders and um, I know that I've already done that because that's just the way I save my scenes but some of these scenes I've, I've heard some some complaints that Carrera can take a long time to save and one thing that we need to realize is that Carrera just lets us do anything that we want it doesn't look at our computer and tell us that we can't do it because we're not spiffy enough we can come into this render area and and set things to um, be so difficult on their computers that they will crash this uh, this part here you just um, it comes with default settings that will work on virtually any um, current computer even laptop if you just use their their default render settings it's it's not going to kill your computer that's that's a nice default to be at but now with my custom objects here these scenes are set up with my my preferred default render settings and then you just you just save the blank scene out here so I'm using my render settings my resolution and then I add my content and my animations from there so without getting really really in depth that my friends is Carrara we have um, 3d painting you can paint on models uh, on 3d models we have primitive primitive objects that you can just quickly add and manipulate to to um, build things if you don't want to actually do your own modeling you can actually build things out of cubes spheres cones and then stretch them around we have the spline modeler um, where you're you're basically drawing with dots and creating a line and it fills in everything for you uh, here's the more popular method of modeling uh, for today which is the vertex modeling we also have metaball object modeling which is um, using uh, positive and negative blobs to carve out 
more organic shapes like this one you see here. Um, there's influences between these spheres that are making them attract to the point where they start to stretch until they uh, touch. You can add negative ones too to add caves or mouths or whatever you want in there. And then we have formula objects completely created through mathematics and there's some cool sites on the internet where you can get nice formulas for creating some formula objects. Text objects is how I added the the DAS 3D's Carrera uh, text onto that uh, opening scene and you can do all kinds of things with your text once you create that. Um, and with any of these little buttons you, you can just drag it into the scene and let go of it or you can just drag it in here and see just by dragging it in there it takes me into this um, spot where I can model my text and right now I, I have just created a model I think I might have to select the font first but um, and there it'll show me my font and I can apply any types of these bevels on the front face or the back face or both and set the depth um, you can get pretty fancy with the stuff you can set how how the fidelity is um, let's just go for this right now and go back to our what's called the assemble room and There you can see my uh, how I modeled my text. Now we can come into these shaders, and I can put a. Oops, I'm too far away. Got to get a little. What I was hitting is the back of this dome right here. So I'll take this reflection and I'll put it right on the face. And oh, what else should we grab? Oh, we don't really want nature, do we? Not not lava. Let's just use some plastic. How about a blue plastic marble? I can add that to all of these little things in here. And then you can test render right in here. It might take a little while because I have some stuff going on. Not enough lights on there to actually show the reflection on there, but anyway, it's, it's, it's just that simple working in Carrara. Um, let's close out that scene, and I believe that's all I have for, for the uh, demonstrations. So just to make sure... Oh, right, I still wanted to show that we have particles, the particle systems, and we have terrain, which is really neat. Um, that's how you, I might as well show you, that's how you can create your own land. By over here on the left, uh, you can add generators and tell it what it's going to be, whether it's going to be a filter, like a canyon filter, or if it's going to actually be a generator like a Mesa generator and it's it's showing up really yucky in there right now because we have a very low preview quality but we can change that we can turn it up and and really and also undo that auto reset so that when we pick a view it'll stay there and now if I disable the Mesa see what that does and and that's just using the filters. Uh, let's go ahead and enable that again. And we can change this to... Well, there's all these different things. O otherwise, if we want, we can go into this map editor, and basically what that is, uh, it's saying, are you sure you want to edit the terrain? This will collapse the, the list of layers. And we, we do. We'll just say, okay. And so now, <clears throat> it has given us 
it it collapsed the we no longer have any of the filters in there but it gave us a nice picture of of a height map of what that what those filters did to it and that's really neat and now we have these tools that we can use to to set up our paintbrush to do different things and you can see it happen in real time over here see what I mean and there now I just canceled that to get rid of it now we can add another generator and it's either going to be a filter or a generator or an advanced generator and um, um, so that's what adding a Gaussian filter does and then when it, whenever you have added something its parameters will show up here okay so we can turn down our Gaussian strength our editable terrain we can set the this the height and so if I change that to 29 instead of 19 it you know makes it more drastic and then I can get rid of the um, Gaussian filter and you know you can you can see what's going on now I can change this ov over here in the in the middle area I can change my world size you can basically work however you want and so now this 29 is much more mild and so we're going to want to go for somewhere in between there and so now now that we have created this little piece of well it's a thousand foot by thousand foot land if we want to keep it exactly like this but we want to shrink it down we can rescale it to whatever we want to do we can go uh, bigger or smaller um, so this this whole thing is really really handy and it's very powerful we can increase the the fidelity of it and you want to be a little careful on how much you increase it on, on the render side of things because it can bog down your your calculations and make your renders take longer excuse me um, unnecessarily because it doesn't take a whole lot of detail on some of these things to um, to make it look really good now if I hit the caps lock I can raise the hot point without actually moving the thing and then hit the caps lock again and drag down my so that's a nice little trick to know but now I can go to my browser look at the shaders and go to terrain and um, <clears throat> why not use one that comes with one of my products I'll go to Dartan Beck and let's use this um, the forest terrain just drag that on there and see what that looks like and so we've just created a little piece of terrain pretty neat huh so um, and then if we wanted to we could just come in here and design ourselves a sky or we could come in here and realistic sky Let's use one of Ringo's. And see, Insta Scene. Oh, but I didn't turn this light into a sunlight, so it's not respecting Ringo's nice sky that he gave us. But, um, oh, and the, the ground is enabled when I have my own ground I either want to lower the horizon of the altitude or disable the ground and I'm not going to have that that issue there anymore I hope that my little examples that I've given you help clue you in a little bit as to what it's all about and 
I'm going to have some more tutorials coming up on how to do some of this stuff for those of you who do have Carrera and might be stuck or want some want a little extra inspiration. Thank you very much. Have a good day.